The first minute of this story begins with a problem every woodworker, homesteader and history lover knows well. Wood is strong, dependable and timeless. Yet the moment nature gets its way, rot begins its slow takeover. Modern hardware stores promise miracle preservatives, synthetic sealants and high-tech coatings that cost a small fortune. Yet, if you look at surviving Viking artifacts, ship fragments, stave church timbers, and tools pulled from damp Scandinavian soil, a pattern emerges. Much of this wood resisted decay far better than expected. Many pieces survived centuries in conditions that should have destroyed them completely. And the question that keeps resurfacing is simple. Why don't we use the Viking method today, when it clearly worked better than most modern solutions? When you dig into the evidence, the answer points to a preservation technique so simple, so practical and so effective that it almost feels like cheating. It didn't require exotic chemicals or advanced tools just a deep understanding of how wood behaves and how nature wants to break it down. Today we're unpacking that method, explaining how the Vikings used it, why it still outperforms many modern products, and how you can apply it directly to your own woodworking or homestead projects. The Viking approach began with understanding that wood fails from within long before the rot is visible. Vikings didn't simply coat wood, they conditioned it. Their preservation method relied on heating wood gently to drive out moisture, tighten the grain and fundamentally alter the internal structure so fungi, rot's main culprit, had nothing soft or wet to colonize. This wasn't the modern process of kiln drying, which can be, you know, a bit harsh and uneven. Instead, they used low controlled heat using smokehouses, hearth edges and embers. The goal was to slowly toast the outer layers while allowing the inner moisture to escape gradually. When wood is heat-treated this way, several things happen that, well, modern research finally caught up with. The sugars inside the wood that fungi love begin to break down. The cell walls shrink and become more water-resistant. And the natural resins inside the timber mobilize, flowing outward to create a barrier. So, the result is a piece of wood that absorbs less water, releases moisture faster, and, well, becomes naturally hostile to decay. This method was used everywhere, from the planks of longships to fence posts and building beams. It's actually one of the main reasons Viking Age wooden artefacts remain so stable, even after centuries buried in bogs or just resting in cold, wet climates. The second part of the method involved introducing natural oils and tar into the heat-opened grain. Once the wood was warmed and its pores opened, the Vikings treated it with a combination of pine tar, fish oil or animal fat. These were not randomly chosen substances. Pine tar is naturally antifungal, water-repellent and long-lasting. Fish oil penetrates deeper than most modern wood oils, especially when the wood is still warm after treatment. An animal fat, once rendered and purified, forms a hydrophobic layer that helps seal the surface. When these materials soak into heat-treated wood, the result is a composite structure. 
hardened timber stabilized by natural resins, coated and infused with moisture-blocking oils that are difficult for rain or microbes to penetrate. Modern outdoor sealants. You know, they try to mimic this effect with synthetics, but honestly, they rarely penetrate as deeply, and more often than not, they tend to flake or peel over time. This is exactly why Viking boat builders could rely on tarred hulls and oars that survived relentless exposure to salt water, wind and cold. It wasn't just luck. It was a deliberately engineered preservation system. And, well, this method can still be applied today with simple tools, and quite frankly, it gives results superior to many store-bought sealants. So, a practical way to use this technique at home begins with selecting your wood. Ideally, a resin-rich species like pine or fir. Start by heating the wood slowly over low coals or near the outer edge of a fire, not in the flames. The goal is to warm it until the surface becomes slightly darker and moisture begins to release. You can also use a heat gun or propane torch on low, but, you know, the traditional method relies on slow, even heating. As the surface opens up, you'll want to apply a mixture of pine tar and boiled linseed oil. Just remember to warm the blend first so it penetrates deeper. Brush it on generously and, well, let the heat pull it inward. For a stronger, traditional finish, you can mix in a small amount of fish oil. The same principle holds today, really. This treatment works exceptionally well for tool handles, outdoor posts, garden beds, raised bed frames, wooden steps, gates, chicken coop framing, and honestly, anything that needs to withstand rain. One well-done Viking-style preservation treatment can outlast modern outdoor wood coatings by years. The reason we don't use this method widely today has more to do with convenience than effectiveness. Mass-produced sealants became popular because they were easy to apply and came in neat cans with bright labels. But their long-term durability rarely matches the deep structural changes created by heat and natural oils. The ancient method takes more time and uh, requires more hands-on involvement, which is exactly why it thrives among craftsmen, experimental archaeologists and people who prefer long-term reliability over convenience. Yet the technique's strength remains undeniable. It modifies wood from the inside out, protects it without toxic chemicals, and honestly costs far less than modern treatments. In the end, the Viking method endures because it respects the nature of the material. It doesn't fight wood. It enhances it. It reinforces the grain, leverages natural compounds, and creates a barrier that can last for generations. For anyone who appreciates history, craftsmanship, or survival know-how, this is one of the most practical ancient techniques worth reviving today. If you found this guide valuable and want more historically grounded, deeply researched breakdowns like this, make sure to subscribe to Relic Logic and share this video with fellow history enthusiasts. The old ways still have a lot to teach us, and we're just getting started.